In this video, we will continue our discussion of how to calculate the area of a surface of revolution, applying the process we learned in the previous video to a specific example. Suppose a reflective lamp is being constructed with a portion of its wall being parabolic and mirror coated with a 100 nanometer layer of silver. The parabolic wall will have the same shape and dimensions as when the curve y equals 1 fourth x squared inches on the x interval from 1 inch to 3 inches will be revolved about the y axis. We want to find the resulting area of the surface to be coated by the silver. Let's begin with the sketch of the two-dimensional curve and the three-dimensional surface. So on the left, we have a sketch of y equals 1 fourth x squared on the interval from 1 to 3. And if we revolve this curve about the, about the y-axis, we can see what's, what will happen to various points along the curve. And we can see this parabolic shape, parabolic solid. Using three-dimensional graphics, we get this. And so let's proceed. Next, we want to partition the curve into n pieces. We'll do it both ways, but we'll begin by partitioning the x interval from 1 to 3. And we want to consider um, what happens as we revolve those uh, small pieces about the axis of revolution, and we want to determine the dimensions of the kth band. Okay. And we note that this band is circular, so it has a radius, and it has a width to it. This radius we will calculate as being right minus left, right, uh, radius being a, a length, so we want to go greater minus lesser to get a positive quantity. Well, that radius comes from x sub k minus x equals 0. So this is going to be x sub k minus 0, which we see here in green. The width of the belt is delta s sub k, and so if I were to consider cutting that belt, and unrolling it, I would get an approximate rectangle whose dimensions are approximately 2 pi r sub k times delta s sub k, which is basically 2 pi x sub k times delta s sub k. Finding surface area, we want to sum the areas of those belts. So I'm going to get approximately the sum k going from 1 to n of 2 pi x sub k times delta s sub k. I let the norm of the partition go to 0, and I develop the integral of 2 pi x ds. Keeping in mind that ds is a measure of arc length, or is a measure of length, and I could write it in terms of x or y, but since I'm integrating with respect to x, I want to write ds and the limits of integration in terms of x. So I'm going to say that this is 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 3 of x times the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx, where dy is the derivative of our equation y equals 1 fourth x squared. So I'm going to take its derivative and I will get 1 half x, which will replace dy dx. And I get 2 pi times integral from 1 to 3 of x times the square root of 1 plus 1 half x squared dx. Proceeding with some algebra, I find a common denominator under the square root. I pull out. Uh, the square root of 1 fourth to get 1 half. And I look at that integral and I see that x is close to the derivative of what's under the radical. And so I'm going to do a u substitution where u is equal to 4 plus x squared. The derivative of u with respect to x is 2x. So solving for x dx, I make the substitution in the integral and I get pi times the integral from 5 to 13 of 1 half times the square root of u du. I can more simply integrate this now, and I get pi over 2 times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves power from 5 to 13, and I evaluate that, and I get approximately 37.38 square inches for uh, the surface area of the parabolic wall. Now, let's consider how to solve the same problem, but instead, what if we partition along the y-axis instead of the x-axis? This will require that the integral be written exclusively in terms of y, not x. So the first thing that we'll do is we will take our equation, y equals 1 fourth x squared, and solve for x. So I get x equals the square root of 4y. If I'm working with x going from 1 to 3, that means that y will 
be, to be between 1 fourth and 9 fourths. I revolve those partition pieces of the curve about the axis of revolution, which is the y-axis in this case. And I want to determine the dimensions of the kth band. So again, I'm going to think the same band that I had before. It has a radius, r sub k, and a width, delta s sub k. This time the radius, again, still right minus left, is x sub k minus 0, x equals 0. But x sub k is now the square root of 4 y sub k. So there we see our radius. We see our delta s sub k. The dimensions of the approximate rectangle are approximately 2 pi times the square root of 4 y sub k times delta s sub k. I sum the areas of the bands, and I get that the surface area is approximately the sum of 2 pi r sub k times delta s sub k as k goes from 1 to n. And I let the norm of the partition go to 0, and I develop the definite integral of 2 pi times the square root of 4y ds. This time, because we want my integral to be strictly in terms of y, we'll let ds be um, the square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy, and I note that the limits of integration are in terms of y, y going from 1 fourth to 9 fourths. dx dy is the derivative of x equals 4y to the 1 half power. So I've got 2 pi times the integral from 1 fourth to 9 fourths, so the square root of 4y times the square root of 1 plus 1 half 4y to the negative 1 half times 4 all squared dy. I perform some algebra and simplify, and I get 4 pi times the integral of from 1 fourth to 9 fourths to the square root of y times the square root of 1 plus 1 over y dy. I perform some more algebra, and I can bring this other uh, square root of y inside, and I get 4 pi times the integral from 1 fourth to 9 fourths of the square root of 1 y plus 1 dy. This can be integrated uh, straightforwardly, and I get, again, approximately 37.38 square inches for the surface area. Be sure that you're able to do this algebra very carefully on your own. Here are some important ideas to take from this video. Always be sure to carefully sketch the curve and the surface generated by revolution about the given axis. And be able to label where the different parts are. Attend to the fact that you're integrating with respect to x or to y, based on how you partition the curve. And finally, many of these problems become very difficult, if not impossible, to solve if you do not carefully take the derivatives and perform the algebra correctly. If at some point in solving one of these problems you are not able to perform the integration, it may be that you incorrectly took a derivative or performed the algebra incorrectly. So make sure you do this very carefully.